Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co-host, Calder Ness. This is episode 271. Howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. <laughs> As a reminder, Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Joining me in the studio today is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Ooh, I'm Simeon Bruce, and if you don't like broccoli, well, you should. Well, I really appreciate that one. Uh... You can already tell we're going to have a great show tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we like to start off by what made us Broccoli's happy. good. Do you, are, are you serious right now, Calder? I am serious you not right like now. Broccoli? I, I don't eat, I'm going to be real with a lot of people, besides like corn and potatoes. Not a lot of vegetables grace my plate. Bro- how do you make broccoli to make it taste good? Uh, you cook it first. Uh, you can steam it, throw a little salt and pepper on it. All right, steam it. You can add cheese. Um... Okay. Honestly, I usually just, I'm lazy, so I usually grab one of those, like, steam-fresh microwave bags, and I just do that, and then I put a bunch of hot sauce on it. I'll have to try that, then. Normally, when you steam a bag of broccoli, it tastes like green, and you're like, mm, this is green. Yep, leaf, green flavor. Green leaf flavor taste with the texture of little beads and chalk in your mouth. But okay, sure, broccoli's awesome. I mean, anything's good if you cover it in cheese. We're going to start off this week <laughs> With more broccoli talk, I mean, personally, I'm an asparagus man myself. You cook that, a little bit of butter, olive oil, or something. Yeah, it's Dial B for broccoli. Dial B for broccoli. Ah, great. Now we already have an episode title. That's easy. Uh, (laughs) No, what made us happy this week, which is not broccoli, uh, I was able to play a lot of the board games I bought at Gen Con with my family. I got to indoctrinate them in Homestar Runner lore by making them watch videos about Trogdor, and then we played a ton of the Trogdor board game, and they they loved it. I was really surprised. I was very happy how much they enjoyed it. It was a co- cooperative board game, and it was really fun. We also played a lot of Terror Below, which is basically the Tremors board game, and everybody loved it. Um, yeah, probably one of my all-time favorite movies is Tremors, and same here with like, my brother and uh, pretty much our entire family because we made them watch them anyways. So they really enjoyed that game a lot. It was just really good hanging out uh, with with the fam and uh, playing board games. What about you, Simeon? What made you happy this week? Well, I I'm only three figures away from having the entire uh, first half of this new Star Trek set. So that was that was fun. I got the cue, the not the not the super good, crazy expensive cue, but the the one with the cool flag and he looks like Napoleon. That's the one I wanted anyhow, because that's the one that spawns all the little uh, soldier dudes. Um, and then I just had a really fun time just messaging WizKids on Twitter all week, trying to get them to send me the WWE pack. And I'm gonna, <laughs> anytime they post anything about WWE going forward, there will be a comment from me somewhere in there telling them to send the pack. That reminds me, like, we have uh, some more news to add, actually, so we'll, we'll easily self-insert that in the news section. Before we got into that, though, I want to say, so what are the, besides the Super Rare Prime, what else are you missing from the Star Trek set? Super Rare Prime and uh, Tasha Yar. Tasha Yar. And I think Ensign Row is the only, so those are, that's two rares and then the Super Rare Prime. Oh, no, I got Ensign Row. I'm missing the Chase Beverly Crusher. Mm, Beverly. Which, I, I mean, she's not a character from the show, so I'm not heavily attached to it. Um, same with the the Super Rare Prime. I'm not going to go after that too hard. Okay, right on. Well, I have a quick story to do. I don't want to, like, totally bogged down the podcast too many like random things like stories and stuff but this was just really fun and is hero clips related so we were just playing 300 modern but casual fun 300 modern i was playing a falcon falcon and captain america team prime falcon rare falcon whatnot it was just a really fun team keeping it casual keeping it light keeping it fun 
but a guy from kind of like my hero clicks past. So if you don't know this about me, I live in the middle of South Dakota. It's three hours both ways kind of to get to a hero clicks venue. I would always go to the west side of the state for the longest time because we always went to that side of the state, and that's where I played Hero Clicks. Every Monday night, it was the same guys. It was awesome. All right, so whenever I would go out there every couple of months, I would always go there. I almost never played Hero Clicks where I play Hero Clicks all the time right now. Never was on the east side of the state. Doug was one of the funniest dudes in that group. He was awesome. All of a sudden, I hadn't, I hadn't seen him in years because he even left that group. He went somewhere else in life and wherever that took him. But now, last week, I was playing in, in the east side of the state, and he was there. And I was like, wow, that's insane. I haven't seen you in so long. What's going on, man? And he, he lives in town now. So it's really crazy cool that I got to see two parts of my life mix together. It was really awesome. It was great seeing, like, old hero clicks, like, friends again and stuff. Because when you would play against Doug, you would you just laugh because he's so ridiculous. He doesn't take the game too seriously or anything. It's just hilarious. But that's not the point of the story. Like, that's like, okay, that's kind of wholesome, almost like a nice story, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you had to see a friend again. Who cares, Calder? The best part is, with one of the guys out in the west side of the state, I had a trade. I bought, like, an eternity and something else for him. And we were, he was eventually just going to, like, pay me back for it. And I, I bought him stuff online before because he doesn't like doing the PayPal, blah, blah, whatever thing. But I haven't been able to get a hold of him for months. So I asked Doug, you know, where is, I'm, I'm going to call him, like, Reggie not use his real name. So where's Reggie at? I haven't seen him in a long time, and I'm trying to give him the stuff. I'm like, oh, Reggie? Yeah, he went to jail. And I was like, what? Really? Because he, he was like, number one, he's a super straight-laced guy. He did not seem like a person who would go to jail. And he has, like, um, like kids and stuff. You're like, well, how do you go to jail? He hired a hitman to kill his ex-wife in the state of South Dakota, and uh, and then he went to jail. So now, if anybody wants an eternity, and I think it's an infinity as well, um, I got those for sale. That's the hero click story. Sometimes, you know, you think you know someone and they just uh, plot to kill their ex-wife. So that's cool. Wow. So that's the story. I don't know if anyone's going to get any joy out of that, uh, but that's hero click story. That's hero click story for this week. <laughs> so Calder, uh, the judge gave him some time, but you didn't give him an eternity. No. <laughs> wow. Ooh. Oh. So bad. Oh, hold I on, apologize back to, to everyone. the Simeon Dad Joke <laughs> podcast. Um, Broccoli is good, kids. Um, it sure might be. <laughs> no, that's super cool. I there's a ton of people that I miss from just like moving, going to like different clicks venues and different cities. And, like you meet like a lot of crazy people, and some of them just like drop off and stop playing Hero Clicks, and some like move away and whatever. So it's always cool to. Meet back up with people from your past like that. Heck yeah, man. Heck yeah. It was, it was really dope. It was really awesome. So now, enough about enough about that, I suppose. We're going to go ahead and get into the news section. There was Scott Porter previews, so we'll start off with those. Slash some previews from Two Clicks from KO. And what was the last place? Highlander Games. Highlander Games. All right, let's hit that bumper. All right, so uh, kicking us off, I'm going to go ahead and start. 039, Pyro. I always always liked Pyro as a character, just flame dude. I always like his hero clicks. He's really cool. He has Brotherhood of Mutants and Freedom Force keywords. He has the trait that both the Magneto and the Sabertooth had, which is uh, my mutant brothers and sisters once per turn. When an effect other than clearing removes an action token from Pyro, after resolutions, you may heal in one click, which is pretty dope. Then he also has five clicks of life, just so everybody knows. He's 50 points, he has a Brotherhood of Mutants team ability, and he has six range, one bolt, no special combat symbols, super standard guy. He has an attack power for his first three clicks, too hot to handle. Energy explosion, comma, poison period. When Pyro uses energy explosion, you may choose that he has triple bolts, or after resolution, he can use barrier at no cost. I really... Now, triple bolts would have been cooler with, like, old energy explosion rules, it's still not bad today, uh, but that that free barrier, that is that is good. I think that's awesome. And then he has a special damage power on every click but his first one. So he has range combat expert, and that's it for his top click. And then every other click since then, he has anyone bring the marshmallows free, destroy an object within range. 
Whenever Pyro uses Range Destroy action to destroy a piece of blocking terrain, after resolutions remove an action token from him. So this is another way to heal him up, which is cool. So this is so now he has two ways to remove action tokens, which is really gnarly. What does his dial look like? He has running shot for his first three clicks. He has that special attack power we talked about. He has ESD for his first three clicks, and then the damage slots, like I said. Then he has sidestep on his last two with pulse wave and barrier. It's a full dial, ladies and gentlemen. It's a stacked deck. Uh, his sidestep is is some one of the best name sidesteps in a while. It's uh, in the mood for a hot date. And man, I oh, I love that. I love that so much. So that's that's pyro. Ladies and gentlemen, anything with uh, with puns, I'm I'm just I'm there. I'm there, man. Oh, because he does flame stuff. Yeah, cause fire, you know, cause fire. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I get it now. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm a little disappointed that he doesn't have an A after that zero three nine, oh, because yeah. that would have meant that uh, potentially we would have gotten like a danger room version, and that would have been cool. Right. But I don't know if. I don't know if they'll do a Danger Room version for the Super Rares, because that would probably be a little disappointing. It'd be a little expensive to get a hold of, you know? Right. So, yeah. Yep, yep. All right. I chose to preview Highlander's Wendigo. It's a 2x2 two two base, so looks like a big white Sasquatch, because that's what it is. Uh, <laughs> so it's like this big monster dude. Um, I think Wolverine's first appearance actually was facing off against, well, of course, like in the Hulk comic, but the Hulk was facing Wendigo at the time. And I think it was Department H at the time sent Wolverine in, and they were like, hey, these two big monsters are fighting. Go stop them, Whisker Face. That was his code name back then. Um before they gave him a real name. he had whiskers. He looked like a cat <laughs> man. It was so creepy. He, so weird. He did. I mean, one man's creepy is another's endearing. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, <laughs> Wendigo comes with animal, monster, and mystic keywords. He's number G018 in the set. He is a 2x2, two two, so he's one of the rare 2x2s. Two he's yeah. got two big traits. His first one is smell of flesh. If you don't know Indian folklore, Wendigo, I think, is a person who has become so hungry that they've decided to, like, eat human flesh. And Basically, their yeah, soul is forever that. corrupted, and they turn into a monster. And what that monster looks like is always different, depending on, you know, where the legend comes from. But that's what this is referring to. Um, so smell of flesh... It's a trait that gives him sidestep, but only if a character has a wounded token. When an opposing character takes damage from an attack, give that character a wounded token if they don't already have one. So it doesn't specify that Wendigo has to be the attacker to give them the wounded token, which means anyone on your team can wound opposing characters. So I'm guessing if you have this guy on your team and he's still alive towards the end of the game, Everyone on the opposing team is going to have a wounded token for the most part. Um, when a character heals, you remove their wounded tokens. So unless they do that, then they get to remove them. His second trait, Ancient Mystical Curse, gives him colossal stamina, steel energy, and when Wendigo uses steel energy, he may heal past his starting line. So we've seen a few characters that can do stuff like this before. Um, we've even seen a few 2 by 2s that can do stuff like this before. He's basically got a vampire dial. Um, so let's look at the dial. He's got four point values he can be played at. 300, 200, 100, and 15. I personally, when given an option like this, I never play him at full dial. So I will never field this guy at 300 points even though he's pretty stacked as far as stats go. Um, I always would rather play at 200 and try and heal up to 300 than play at, like, 300. Um, what's another character like that? Like, Mangog? No one ever plays Mangog at, like, 700, right? No. no. You do, like, 450 and then go pull the Odin Sword and get to 700 that way. Um, that is if you're a big jerk who plays Mangog at 450. Which I am. Uh, <laughs> so, let's see. Uh, we're going to move on to his special speed power. 
He's only got one special speed power. He actually has it for a good portion of his dial, um, 11 out of his 15 clicks. So it gives him charge and flurry. When Wendigo ends his movement, after resolutions, he may make a close attack, but only to target a character with a wounded token. So if you were to pop in and shoot Wolverine, for instance, and give him a wounded token, and Wendigo charges up and flurries on somebody, but he ends his movement next to Wolverine, he could then also attack Wolverine. He can then also use his sidestep to get a fourth attack off in one turn, potentially healing him up four clicks. So if you played him at 100 points, that would heal him up one click shy of his 200-point line. That's pretty fun. Uh, he's got <laughs> he's got a fun. single stop. <laughs> it will be fun when I have this guy, or multiples, hopefully. Uh, he's got a stop click. It's stop invuln. If no opposing character has a wounded token, do not stop turning the dial due to stop. So he's only got a stop click if there's a wounded token on the board. There should be, because not a lot of characters can heal freely every turn. Uh, you definitely have ways of healing characters, but I'd say in the middle of a game, you probably won't be able to take time out to heal like the one attacker that got a wounded token. So someone on their team will most likely always have a wounded token. Let's look at these stats. Um, if you do manage to get him to top dial, He's got an 11 movement, which means uh, 6 speed charge and flurry. He's got a 12 attack, a 19 defense with invincible, and a 5 damage with exploit. I'd rather just do the flurry and get 10 damage put out there than do 5 penetrating, but that's just me. What do you think, Calder? I think he's insane. It's nuts, but uh, he's pretty dope. No, I really... I really hope the sculpt does turn out as good as the rendering is. Man, I don't know. Maybe. Is that if they if they keep the amount of detail, it is a great sculpt. Um, oh, it looks like her. it could be one of their D and D miniatures almost. Oh yeah, for sure. No, it looks awesome. Um, I think this is insane. This is a uh, yeah. This is a great piece for 15 points, especially. Um, there's risk, but super playable to put on teams. I love it. I seriously, I love yeah. this figure so much. Um, He's a great theme boost for 15 points. Oh, sure. uh, I don't know Animal, if Animal Monster, seems mystical? a lot of play, but Monster and Mystical could definitely We're gonna use a 15 point teams. guy. I think it is the cheapest Monster Carnage, right? 10 points. So, like, yep. this dude's an easy fit, too. Yeah, this is gnarly. So that is all for those previews. Now we're going to go ahead and roll right into Scott Porter. Hello, everybody in Heroclix land. That's what Scott Porter says. That's what he sounds like. Sadly, oh, I thought that like Scott Porter is. Is Scott not in studio with you? I could yeah. have swore that was Scott. Hi, Scott. How are you? He Hello there, Calder. Uh, today we're going to be talking about some of the figures that I opened up today in my HeroClix WizKids <laughs> X-Men animated series Dark Phoenix unboxing. No, but seriously. So we got quite a bit of good stuff. We had screenshots posted on both Twitter and Facebook. And this is me killing time because I realized I didn't pull up my figure right away. There he is. All right, cool. So. Scott Porter started his unboxing. It's pretty amazing, Simeon. What did you think? Just overall, um, before we get into it. Before we get into it, I think the Dyson token pack is an easy buy for me. The color scheme is different than most tokens that I have right now. It's different enough, I guess. Uh, the dice have little phoenixes on them, so that's cool. Um, I'll play them with my, my Thanos Infinity Gauntlet dice, so I can be like, oh, you got phoenixed. Or, oh, you got gauntleted. I don't know. Why not say I don't snapped? actually say things like that. Okay. You, you really <laughs> uh, could have I mean, fooled me. This, this yeah. is the same guy who's like, a roll for willpower? Oh, okay. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I I roll for willpower because it makes me happy, Calder. <laughs> that's that's why I roll for willpower and energy <laughs> shield and uh, oh, combat geez. reflexes. All right, so Senator Robert Kelly... Uh, this is the first time we're getting him since Days of Future Past, and that was like a 2013, I want to say, set. It's been, a, it's been a hot minute since we had Senator Robert Kelly. This is only his, I think, third version. He was a pog before, so this is the third version of him. He has two traits, special damage power. 
He is 0 18. He's an uncommon in the set. He has zero range, no special combat symbols. He's 30 points. The dial is a little something like this because the traits are more interesting. He has sidestep for his first two clicks, force blast on his last. Let me double check, make sure that's force blast actually. It's pretty weird. Yeah, it's force blast. Alright, cool. Pushing agendas. What a, what a, what a name. Uh, then he has nine attack for two and then eight attack. No attack power at all. He has ESD on his first two clicks and then uh, super senses on his last two. He has a special damage power on his first two, and then normal leadership on his last two. So why are we playing Senator Robert Kelly, and why am I talking about him? He has one, his first trait, I have come to see that mutants are not a threat I once thought them to be, which is, uh, that's a lie. <clears throat> once per game when Senator Robert Kelly is KO'd, do not remove him from the game. Instead, after resolutions, place him in a square he last occupied on click number three. And he can't be healed this game, he is now friendly, to your opponent's force and isn't scored again. So that's cool. He's got a bit of a switching side mechanic. His second trait is perplex, comma, but only to target opposing characters. So that's kind of interesting. His special damage power he has for his first two clicks of his dial is Stoking Mutant Hysteria, Mutant Registration Act. Leadership period when Senator Robert Kelly uses it and succeeds. Instead of the normal effect, you may generate a 006 Friends of Humanity if he is adjacent to three or more Friends of Humanity, you may generate a G002 Sentinel instead. Generating either, roll for their trait to determine starting click, which means that the big old Sentinel, the generic Sentinel that we're going to get, the, I assume, common or uncommon, whatever they are, is going to be one of like the X-Men student slash suited henchmen, where once they start the game, you roll for their trait, which is really cool. And the Friends of Humanity is going to be like a a protester, I want to say, kind of like a like a, maybe there's going to be like a mob protester and like a peaceful protester version that you can land on. That'd be really interesting uh, mechanic. But basically, if you keep rolling leadership, you can get a Sentinel on your team. So for 30 points, pretty gnarly. And depending on what the Friends of Humanity do, I assume they're just going to be like normal folks. So probably nothing crazy. Uh, but you never know what kind of support powers they could have. So I think he's solid for 30 points, and then whether or not he's busted for 30 points, we shall see based on what, of course, his uh, his Friends of Humanity slash what that Sentinel does. Yeah, you could potentially, after you get the three friends, you could potentially just creep cranking out Sentinels each turn. and Because I don't think they count towards your sideline. It's not something you have to sideline at all. It's just generated. So... Unless they're super easy to KO and you're just feeding your opponent like easy points, I think it'd be hilarious if like turn six there's like three sentinels on the board that weren't there to begin with. <laughs> that would be awesome. Uh, so you want to take us away to the next one? Yeah, so I decided to talk about Exodus, uh, number G005. He's a colossal, he is uncommon, and he is unique. Look at that sculpt. That Ooh. is. That is easily a super rare sculpt in any other set. That thing is beastly. And since he's an uncommon 2x2, two two, that means that he will share his sculpt, or at least some parts of it, with a rare from the set. So I'm really excited to see what that could possibly be. I'm hoping it's another standard size character. And like maybe like Magneto doing something funky, or I don't know. That's kind of That's kind of my big hope right now is that we get like a crazy Magneto on a 2x2 two two base. So let's go into what he's actually got. Um, other than looking super cool, he has a trait, Genotion Force Field. At the beginning of the game, choose 2, 4, 6, or 8 to be X. When a character more than X squares away would move within X squares of Exodus and wasn't given a move action, that character stops moving. So he's basically got a... Field. We've seen this in characters like uh, Groot Thor has something like this. Uh, Leash, or not Leash, Lashina from Harley Quinn and the Gotham Girls had something like this, where if someone moves within a certain amount of squares, they get like locked up with this person. So I think if you have improved movement characters, you might be able to get around this, but I'm not sure. Um, the big thing, though, is you could pick eight and then if a character is outside of your eight squares and moves within the eight squares, and it's not just like a normal move, they have to stop at that eight-square barrier. Um, so that's the first half of his trait. Second half, 
When a character more than X squares away attacks, one or more characters within X squares of Exodus modify their attack minus one. So let's say you pick six. If a character is more than six squares away and they're shooting at one of your buddies who is within six squares of Exodus, that person gets a minus one to their attack. So it's a very wordy trait, and it's kind of, I mean, I can't really say anything other than that. It's just very wordy, and I don't know if I'm actually getting it completely correct. But it sounds it sounds fairly straightforward. You're saying it's kind of wonky. It's a little like, it is. I think I know what's going on here, but I'm not 100% entirely sure. Yeah. Mostly the second half. It's like the... <laughs> When a character more than X squares away attacks one or more characters within X squares of Exodus. Man, I hate algebra. Yeah, I don't think you're ever picking two. You're probably no. picking six or, I mean, maybe four, but probably six or eight. Um, I, yeah. He has a single special attack power, Magneto's Greatest Disciple. Energy explosion, pulse wave, telekinesis, precision strike but it can be used with more than one target. So that's a whole bunch of cool stuff that he's got there. Uh, he's got one special damage power as well, named by Magnus himself to lead mutants forward. Leadership. When Exodus uses it and succeeds, instead of normal effect, you may remove an action token from up to three adjacent friendly characters that each share a keyword with him. If you do, until your next turn, modify Exodus's combat values plus one for each token removed. So that's, I mean, you, you have to succeed on leadership, but even on his lowest point dial, that's going to give him a 21 defense if you remove him from three. Um, speaking of keywords, I guess I should mention that since Maybe. I'm talking about a power that, you know, deals with that. He has Acolytes, Brotherhood of Mutants, Marauders, and Herald. Man, those Herald teams are tough to deal with. I think he might be the only modern herald. Um, don't quote me on that. Let's look at his dial. He comes in at 500 points, 350 points, 175, or 75. He's got seven range, two lightning bolts. He's got flight, indom, and even though he's a two by two, he does have the standard size symbol. Um, he's still not a standard character because he's bigger than a Peanut base. I think peanut bases are still standard, but yes. uh, anything that's not a one by one, a single base or peanut base is not standard. So every starting line gives you running shot. Every starting line gives you 11 attack. Um, at 500, 350, and 175, he has four damage. At 75, he's only got three. But if you make that leadership roll, which he has on the first two clicks of each starting line, he's got that special leadership. And if you make that, he's got plus three combat values if you manage to pull three tokens off, that is. So he could have a 14 attack on any one of these lines with seven to six damage. And again, he's got pulse wave, energy explosion, TK, and precision strike, so... No matter which way you go with him, it's kind of cool. Um, I don't, I don't think that he's gonna be super potent, but he'll be really fun for thematic teams. Like, I won't play a Brotherhood of Mutants team without him on it, even if he's only at 75 points. For sure, but, yeah, yeah. He goes from running shot to phasing. Um, on his upper dials, he's got some mind control and sidestep. Really, it's, I mean, the dial's not all too impressive outside of those first clicks where he's got the uh, special attack and special leadership power. But he is Endom, and I don't know. I think he's he's interesting enough. I think he's awesome. Um, it would be really cool, I think, in Sealed, if you can somehow get a Brotherhood of Mutants theme team, which is, I know, asking a lot. But, uh, but yeah, dude, can you, just the thought of having, like, what is it, 12 speed, 18, which is a just seven square running shot. And, you know, I, I don't know if they count range combo. I used to, like, 10, 10, <laughs> 10 range, you know, with 14 attack for, for six damage for 75 points. Sounds good to me. Of course, that is removing tokens from people specifically. So you're not, is that right? You have to remove a token from them, so you can't carry them up. 
So you have to, yeah, you have to actually have to remove our action token. So you yeah, can do up it. to they, three adjacent friendly. Characters. There's a possibility. Um, only bad thing is, uh, you're gonna use up all your actions to do that. You know, 300 so 400 point. Yeah, so four actions. Yeah, you'd have to move. You move up everybody, and you'd be like, I really gotta bank on this leadership. Oh boy, here we go, here we go. So yeah. I don't know how we're gonna be able to reliably pull that off. Probably not very. But when it does much happen, much more likely he'll get like one or a plus one or plus two. But yeah. But yeah. But just the look on your opponent's face when you're like, all right, uh, does a 14 plus? Oh, I rolled. I rolled a four. Does it that hit a 14 plus four? And they're like, yes, yes, it does. <laughs> you terrible person. Uh, Sorry, these are things I've heard before. It's a PTSD for me. Oh, just what happens when you're Simeon. When I call the terrible <laughs> person a majority play of the time. like I do. Yeah. Yeah. Hate that guy. All right, cool. So I'm gonna go ahead. And We're gonna do another two by two figure. Uh, it's kind of nuts. He pulled both a normal super rare Scott Porter that is, and a super rare Colossal. Ooh. Ah, ooh, ah. So we're going to talk about Shadow King, Brotherhood of Mutants, Monster, and Past. Monster is a terrible keyword. I can't believe he has it. He's also G023A, which means he's, I'm going to assume, our super rare Prime Colossal, or maybe he is our Brotherhood of Mutants Danger Room construct <laughs> or something. You, that you would be know. so crazy if they did a Danger Room construct. <laughs> Of the super rare colossal, <laughs> be insane. But uh, but here we are. This is, just what, this is what we're doing now. So he has two traits: a being of the astral plane. I don't know why I said it like that. Shadow King can reduce penetrating damage. So you know, just keep keep that in mind when we uh, when we go ahead and talk. Um, just remember, uh, he has invincible uh, for two clicks because you know when he can already reduce penetrating. That's so important. The second trait is Shadow King can't be targeted by opposing characters five or more squares away. So just like that red onslaught we talked about earlier. He has 150, 300, 500, and 700 R's point lines. He is power cosmic. He has eight range, triple target. No special combat symbols besides the big old fist there. So he's not flying. He's improved targeting, ignores hindering terrain, and he has a special speed and a special attack power. We're just going to go ahead and use his 150 point line uh, for... Thing. Yeah, because 300, 300 points, he'd be pretty gnarly, but he doesn't have this uh, speed power. So let's go ahead and go over it really quick. The speed power is, you belong to the Shadow King now. Mind control, comma, phasing teleport. Once per turn, when Shadow King uses either, after resolutions, he may use the other one at no cost. So, theoretically, theoretically speaking, you can phasing teleport up 11 squares, and then shoot 8 squares, triple target mind control, ignoring... Hindering terrain, and oh yeah, your colossal you can see over all sorts of stuff. If you win map, that is. So that's what we can do at 150 points. He has an 11 attack, uh, pulse wave, 18 defense and vulnerability, four damage with probability control, and for 150 points he also has what is it? one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight clicks of life. So yeah, that's pretty terrible. Um, and then what is his special attack power, which he does not have on his 150 point line until, uh, what is it, the third click in, and then he has it for three clicks, uh, with some sidestep and perplex. And this is Penetrating Psychic Blast, when Shadow King KOs a character, after resolutions deal one penetrating damage to each opposing character that was adjacent to that character. So, that's pretty cool. If he KOs someone, he's only doing three damage on that click, no prob, a little bit of perplex, which is kind of cool. So if you kill somebody, you got to do a little psh, massive and kind of mini energy explosion, penetrating whatnot. I think his mind control power is insanely nuts. I think for 150 points, if you pull this guy in sealed, if he's a must play, I think he's pretty gnarly at uh, at 300 points. What do, you, what do you think, Simeon? 150, 300. What are you feeling? I think that special speed I, power is just too much. I I love the 300 point line in sealed. Because you've got impervious a 19 defense impervious, which can reduce penetrating, and so that's that's the one reason I like that over his uh, 150. Um, otherwise, I mean, also he's got five damage without wit, so there's that. But otherwise, no, I think yeah, if you have 150 with some support, or maybe you have Senator Kelly who can pop out mastermind fodder for him or something like that, then he's just a machine at 150 as well. And 
Yeah. So you can, as you said, you can phase up 11 and then shoot 8. But retroactively, you could, let's say you get hit to your last two clicks, you could mind control and then phase 10 squares away, and the next turn use, like, regen or something like that. So all around pretty cool guy. Um, the sculpt, I don't know. I think We've the seen sculpt's the sculpt, uh, cool. a while back, right? Yeah, we did. We saw his and Professor X's, I think, because they they like donned shadow plane like samurai armor stuff. I don't know. They turned into like astral plane megazords, is what they did to fight for Storm. <laughs> uh, yeah. What? This is a good episode. You don't remember that? Oh my gosh. No, sadly, I like, don't. I control Storm. I've been there since she was a child. Or, I don't know. Oh, like yes, that. yes. And yes, then yes, yes. they start fighting because they're both uh, telepaths. And for As some reason, do. rather than one of them just being like stronger than the other, they have to turn into like Megazord versions of themselves and battle it out. And I mean, it was a cartoon, so that explains it. You're saying you don't want robot X-Men, Simeon? Come on. It's all about the robot. If they gave, if they gave that uh, Professor X, like robot keyword, that'd be pretty awesome. And that could be the prime that Professor X, and that would make me sad because I really want it, that but I really so don't want to pay the price get. for a super rare prime colossal. Super rare prime colossal Professor X robot just that'd be action. That, see, now I want it, but I also don't want it. Cause, man, that'd be hard to get. Yeah, it's like either I pull it or I cut off a foot and trade for it. You gotta do what you gotta do. People take feet for clicks, right? Feet for clicks. There's someone out there who'll, who's, who's got enough oh. foot fetish going on, and he's like, oh, the Simeon feet. <laughs> yeah, super cool. Nobody Simeon wants feet. that. That's easy. <laughs> this is, uh, you know, that's too creepy. We're, I should cut that from the show, but we're not going to. Let's, <laughs> let's just move on instead. So, speaking of uh, fractured savants, um, <laughs> we got a, a switch clicks. The first Switch what? Clicks in a set since uh, I think we're in agreement that uh, Deadpool was the last time we saw a Switch Clicks in a set. Um, oh, WizKids is X-Men coming out. For Genesis, but yeah, right. A figure like this, where it's one figure, two dials, when you get them in a booster. Yes. Yeah. And, and two cards. And so we've got Legion, Fractured Savant, and then just plain Legion. Um so Legion Fract- Fractured Savant is number 036A. He is a super rare. He has six range. He is 85 points with the X-Men keyword. Um, so his dial, if you've seen title characters before, which is what this one is, um, his dial is extremely plain. Uh, it's just sidestep, his entire dial, and toughness, his entire dial. And then his last three clicks, he has perplex. Other than that, uh, he's an 11 for the first three clicks, a 10 attack for the last three clicks. He's an 18 for his first clicks, and then a 17 until his last click, which is a 16. His damage goes from 4 to 3 for most of his dial, and then his last click is 2 damage. So, if it was just that, it would be a terrible 85 points. It would be awful. Other than the fact that it's Legion, um, it would be terrible. But that is not all. He is a title character. So he starts with one plot point, his plus one ability, I'm not in control. Three, choose two different standard powers. Then an opponent chooses one of those two. Legion, Fractured Savant, can use the chosen power or the power chosen by your opponent until your next turn. So let's say it's my first turn and not not, not my first turn. Let's say, yeah, we'll go first turn. Calder, you're playing against me, and I put this guy on the table, and I've got a TK piece next to him, and I do a plus one, and I choose running shot and hypersonic. Which one are you going to give me? You can have running shot. Wrong! I get running shot. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, there's what, I'm, what my point is, is uh, you can kind of hedge your bets with this plus one, where, like, let's say you pick Mastermind and Invincible, 
And they're like, well, I don't want you to have Mastermind, so I'm going to give you Invincible. And then you're like, haha, I can reduce penetrating damage, you know. Or you want Prob and Shape Change, and they give you, you know, they have to give you what they think is the lesser of two evils or what they can work around. Right. Uh, he's not protected outwit, so it is very possible that you could outwit a power before that person's turn and then also choose that power that you outwitted, and then they just can't use it. And that'd be real mean. All right, his minus one ability, though. <laughs> Moving on. His minus one, I'm trying to maintain control. So this is, he's trying a little bit harder in this this one. Three, choose two standard powers. Legion, Fractured Savant can use the chosen powers until your next turn. So this is an upgrade. Instead of getting a plus one plot point, you're minus one, and you get both powers that you pick. You start with one plot point, so you could do this right off the bat. And honestly, that's, I mean, when do you not want two powers to choose from? Like, I mean, was that good on Goblin King? No, it was terrible. And that's yeah, why I don't, he got eradicated because he was so I don't mad. think he won uh, Worlds, did he? No. Absolutely uh, not. Definitely nope, terrible didn't. figure. And even after he was changed, he was still never used, for sure. <laughs> His choosing powers right. has never been good ever, Goblin King. If you huh. do manage to get to uh, four plot points, which I don't know if, I think the minus one is good enough on its own that you don't really need to get to the minus four. But if you do, you get I am control. Free, Legion, Fractured Savant can use all standard powers except Earthbound Neutralized and Battle Fury until the end of your next turn. Every standard... Can you imagine playing this with a WWE figure on your team? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The new packs, <laughs> it's like, not only do I have oh. charge, running shot, flurry, plasticity, sidestep, um, phasing, I also leap have climb. Hold and nimble. <laughs> I'm so nimble right now, brother. Uh, so, it's just kind of silly. His minus four is like, all right, you get to do all the things. Um, like, would you like to perplex your damage to five and maybe pulse wave somebody? for, like, you know, five squares of knockback, because, hey, you've also got Force Blast. I mean, because you can do that. You can do that with this guy. You know, you thought giving that one chick all the speed powers was dumb. You ain't seen nothing yet, kid. Yeah, all standard powers. I just, it's hard to even keep track of all standard powers, let alone all of a sudden one character has every single one. Um, yeah. Don't forget to outwit... <laughs> This is, All right. Yeah, right. Can you imagine, like, forgetting to outwit, and you're like, okay, running shot, penetrating psychic blast. You know, I have to specifically choose one target. I can't pulse wave. You forget to outwit, and he makes shape change. You're like, oh, wow. <laughs> kind of sucked not having – or, like, charge, what, like, charge exploit, whatever. They make shape change, and you're like, oh, I didn't really uh, think that far. Uh, oh, oh, man. Yeah, I forgot well, that about sucks. it. You know. Uh, that's you gonna don't happen get, at least you don't once get Battle Fury with this figure. Which, no, see exactly. Not getting Battle Fury might be the killer there for you. If only. <laughs> if only. If only there was only other. I got Battle Fury to nerf half the other powers I just got. So for 85 points, you get a lot of utility with this guy. Um, he's got X Men keyword. So if he doesn't make it on an X Men team and at least win a WKO, I'll be surprised. But title characters are not without their drawbacks. And his is probably... Oh, it's bad. Oh, it's pretty bad. Um, when Legion Fractured Savant is KO'd, each opponent chooses two standard powers. Until your next turn, characters on that opponent's force can use those p two powers. So, I mean, they only get them for one turn, but that could... Like, let's say they choose regen and shape change, and then their next turn they just regen for their characters and... Like, good luck hitting them, that, like, that entire turn. Um, that, like, it's just rough. decide to just go really crazy and be like, um, all right, well, I have three people left running shot pulse wave. Let's see what we can do. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. This, uh, this walking wood has, like, charge, flurry, I don't know what else, precision strike. Charge, you give, it. give it charge blades and flurry. Already has yeah. Blades. Yeah. <laughs> flurry Side blades. Step, charge, Let's do it, you know? So, I mean... Because, yeah, it says characters on that opponent's force, so this would apply to, like, bystanders, this would apply to retaliators, 
anything that's on their force would benefit from this. All right, let's go to 036B, just plain Legion. This, this is guy's... the plain version, ladies, <laughs> ladies and gents, the plain the easy version to, to deal with. Um, so this one is not a title character, and you get him for 10 points less. He's 75, he gets 6 range, 1 lightning bolt, same as his counterpart. Um, keywords, he gets New Mutants. Boo. Ooh. Uh, new Mutants isn't bad, I just... There's so many more X-Men to choose from. It's just not great. (laughs) All right, he's got one trait. We are Legion. At the beginning of your turn, roll a D6. Then you you may then add or subtract one from the result. Then turn Legion's dial to that click number. He does not return to his initial click. You can't access click zero in any other way. So if you roll a six, you can turn him to click seven, or you can turn him to click five. Um, you can also leave him on click six. If you roll a one, you can turn him to his click zero, which is what I would definitely do. Or you can keep him on the amazing one click. (laughs) With his blank speed, 11 attack, super senses, 18 defense and prob. It's not bad. Um, you miss, you miss the one damage. Uh, so I mean, you missed the one factor. (laughs) Yeah, it is. That is the bad part. (laughs) All right, let's go in order. On click zero, so let's say you roll that one and you get his magical click zero. He's got nine speed sidestep. He's got 12 attack pensai. He's got 19 special defense. That special defense is living voodoo doll. When Legion takes damage from an opponent's attack, while this power is displayed, after resolutions deal the attacker damage equal to the amount taken by Legion. Are you even going to attack him on this click? I sure wouldn't. I would hedge my bets and be like, you know what? Let's see what else he rolls instead. 19 defense, the prob. And then every time I attack him, uh, if I don't, you know, kill him in the same turn, yeah, no thanks. Miss me with that, man. I'll just, I'll see you you're, later. You're definitely not going to, like, one-shot him off of this click. If you um, try to one-shot him, then you just delete yourself. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, it's like Tony Stark, like, I am Iron Man. And you die afterwards, like, well, I killed Legion, 75 points, whoop de do. Yeah, it's like a Cull Obsidian kind of thing. Um, So you potentially you could hit him for three onto one of his worst clicks and then KO him from there. So you could stack a few attacks in there. But uh, 19 is hard to hit, and he's got prob, and he's got a solid attack. So this attack is or this click is probably one of his better ones. Click one, he has eight speed, no speed power, 11 attack, no attack power. 18 super senses and one damage prob control. I I think you only put him on this click if it's like a defensive. You're like two tokens already, and you just have to like put him on a better defense click. That's the only reason I see him putting on click one. Um, click two, he has his special uh, speed power. This is the only click that he has a special speed power on. So click two, he's got escapee number two, chain, autonomous, flight symbol. When this character hits with a close attack, after resolutions, generate a chain bystander. Well, what does the chain bystander have? Autonomous, flight symbol. When this character hits with a close attack, after resolutions, generate a chain bystander. Well, what does that chain bystander have? (laughs) Are you going to just let me keep going? (laughs) I was gonna, I was gonna see how far you would go. Honestly, I was like, so what does that chain bystander have? I don't know. So, Tell me, Simeon, what does he have? So on click two, he generates this chain bystander. Let's go over his stats because this is gonna be a little hard to pull off. He's got six speed with that special attack, which, granted, it does have autonomous, which is like, it's not gonna count towards your action total. It does have flight, but he has no movement attack. Um, he has a nine attack which is his lowest attack, his whole dial. He has a 16 blank defense, which is rough. He has one damage exploit. So, oof. All you have to do is hit. You don't actually have to damage. So there's that. Let's just let's just uh, put that out there. But now the chain bystander has that exact same damage, or that exact same attack power, or speed power. Speed power. It's, it's a speed, speed power. He's got no, that exact actually... same... 
the click is the exact same. Yep. Let's just leave it there. Uh, he doesn't have the six range, and he's zero points. But Chain does have that autonomous flight symbol, and when he hits with a close attack after resolutions, he makes another one. So Another one. Since uh, he's got autonomous, if you manage to spit out one Chain, let's, let's just uh, go over how I would try and do this. I'm going to perplex someone's defense down by three. I'm going to TK Legion on this click over next to that person. I'm going to try and hit him. I'm going to probably prob it a few times if I, like, have to. I'm going to spit out one of these chain guys. That guy's going to hit him. The next one's going to hit him. The next one's going to... I mean, as long as I can keep hitting, I'm going to keep making these guys. And then once I've got, like, 17 of them on the board, I'm going to call in the Wolverine with the uh, inspiration that gives you blades. And I've got a bunch of autonomous guys with blades exploit. That's what I'm going to do. So next turn you're just going to push them all to kill themselves? To oh, absolutely. Exploit. Okay. And it's not going to count towards my action total. That's right. I mean, I might even just give them charge with the Colossus ID. I haven't decided. Ooh. Or I might I might run Tigra and give them charge and blades. Ooh. Although that's going to take a lot more setup. Yeah. Would be. Anyway. So that's, that's click two. It's not stellar other than that. The potential. Cool the potential, stand. Simeon. The potential. And if you roll a two on on that click, you really don't have great options. So go ahead and go into to click three. Yeah, because, yeah, you've got your click one, which is not an offensive click. But then we've got click three, which is five speed, no speed power, ten attack, energy explosion, fifteen defense with defend, two damage with support. Ugh. This is click three, so if you land on this in sealed, like if you chose to go to this in sealed, I don't know what you're doing, but if you land on this somehow, like if they hit you to this click, all they have to do is hit you for five damage, and there's, I mean, it's going to be easy because a 15 defense is, uh, that's pretty much just not critting Yeah. with like a couple perplexes, you just don't have to crit miss. Ugh. But he does have a little bit of meta capability, I guess. You know, so I don't know cool. how many times I've said, all I have to do to hit is not crit miss, and I've crit miss. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, I have yeah. done that before. Should stop saying that. Yeah, you really should. You jinxes it. You guys are like, <laughs> yeah, oh, well, have we got a show for you. Guess what you get. All right, so click four. He's got flurry blades, seven speed flurry, 11 attack blades. Pretty solid if he's already tied up with somebody. Um, and then he's got that special defense power again, when Legion takes damage from an opponent's attack while this power is displayed. After resolutions, deal the attacker damage equal to the amount taken by Legion. So this is a time when I think if your opponent knows his dial well, they might actually hit him for four damage. Because if they hit him for anything else, he's not going to die, and he's going to end up on a better click, and they probably won't want that. Um... So they might actually hit him for four and then end up taking four, like the Cole Obsidian thing. Right. Now on click five, he's got Mind Control, Steel Energy, 18 Defense Invuln, and three damage. Steel Energy is 11 attack. Um, I, I guess you could go to this click for Mind Control. I don't think you go to this click to, like, to heal up to the next click. I'm going to heal myself. I mean... I don't know, especially because if you if this click is an option, uh, it means that the click before it is also an option. Right. One of the one of those clicks around it has to be another option, and they're both better in my opinion. Um, the click after it is click six, and it is eight speed charge, twelve attack super strength, eighteen defense with invincible. And four damage with perplex. So he could do six damage on this click with a heavy object. And he could bump himself up to a 13 attack to do it. He could bump his speed up so he's got a five range charge. He could bump his damage up and pick up a heavy for seven damage. Um, lots of options there. I don't know if you're putting heavies down with this guy. Since this click is probably not going to pop up a whole lot. 
Then we go to his last click, click seven. Um, so if you roll a six, you could put him on his last click on purpose. Would you do that, Calder? It'd be risky business. I'd have to feel pretty darn confident uh, before I just go ahead and be like, yeah, you know what? Yeah, we'll slap him on his last click. Sure, you know. I'd, I'd only do it if he already had an action token so I could push him to death. Push him to death? <laughs> yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't have end up. Uh, so his last click, he's got running shot, nine speed. So that's a five square running shot. Twelve attack, pulse wave. So if you do that, you've got five squares and then your your range has gone down to three so it's, it's fairly cool. easy to it's single cool. target with that Five damage. Um, 19 defense with impervious so that's another click where he's got a 19 defense five damage with prob control I like this click almost as much as I like the first click if it wasn't the last click on his dial I would probably try getting him to it more often but it's kind of the whole high-risk, high-reward sort of thing going on. Like, you can running shot, 12, 12 attack, 5 damage, you know, pulse wave. But also, once you Patrick get pegged for one, you're de- yeah, Patrick the Leaper can kill you. Like, <laughs> precision strike, blip, you know. Dolphin um, can kill you because you've got an action <laughs> token and they can in-cap you. <laughs> in-cap you instantaneously. Like, you know, it's it's rough, buddy. It's rough. Yeah. You know, it's so... Yeah, I, I like both the dials to this guy. I'm super glad that we got both dials and it's a switch click so you don't have to try and grab like the prime version. Um, you get both. I think out of the two, I end up running the title character almost every time though. As much as I want those bystanders to just like swarm and just continually sw- like, because after you make one and that one makes one, it's like a multiple man thing. You can just like move Legion away and like just keep like those guys building up. I'm not gonna lie, trying to pull that off. Like if you really can totally like if you have your theme team, whatever. Well, not really new mutants, never mind. But like if in, let's say in sealed, if you somehow get enough prop or flex, whatever it is, if you can chain that off, imagine how long your turn will take if you just keep, Oh my god. It's gonna be insane. It's like, well, I guess I'm up on so much autonomous. If I if I keep hitting and I keep having targets to chain these dudes and then eventually it's like, I know they only have a 16 defense, but i got to work my way through all these bodies just to get away from. It's insane. Um, I love the idea of this just ridiculousness. It's not broken. It's not totally overpowered. You have to hit with a 9 attack. And sure, it's only hit, not damage. They do have exploit, which is cool. But just thinking about something happening, this is the kind of mechanics I love to see in hero clicks because it's just... It's kind of stupid, it's pretty dumb, but man, if it works, it's going to be hilarious. And your opponent is going to be like, I don't even know if I can be mad, because I honestly kind of wanted to see this happen too, you know? Like, yeah. it's just it's just hilarious, it's awesome, it really is. I've, I've built entire teams around, I mean, bystander teams are actually, like, fairly good. But I've built entire sure. teams around, like, weird gimmicks that one character does that I just want to, like, see like happen really well um and the the bystanders aren't terrible i mean they're they're not as good as the hired flunkies because the hired flunkies have range and they've got underworld yeah but they are good they do have autonomous and flight the other thing is uh legion doesn't have flight on most of his clicks so if you make one of these guys instead of attacking or let's say let's say you make one and that one attacks and you make like another two or something one of them, instead of attacking, could just fly Legion away so that he doesn't get blasted on that really oh, yeah, flick that sure. he's on. So, I mean, you've got options with it. And, yeah, I just <laughs> I just love the idea of having, like, so much cannon fodder on the map that uh, your opponent doesn't know what to do with. I beat a Daredevil in Earth X Sealed because I had two guys that spawned the hired, fl- or not, were they hired flunkies in Earth-X? They're hired yeah. flunkies, correct. I had uh, I had President Osborne, and I think I had the Rose. And I, I at one point had like five hired flunkies on the map, and I just kept pushing them to shoot at Daredevil because I just needed sixes. It didn't matter if I like damaged him. I just needed to like roll a six in one of the rolls. And eventually, uh, after about 20 or 
25 attacks, I finally got like a crit hit on one of them. And so <laughs> Hired Flunky killed off Daredevil. That's awesome. That is that's just amazing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is that's X Men. Uh, Simeon, how much of the set are you gonna buy? Oh, just based on too what we much. know so far, too much. And this guy is going to Worlds, so he's already gonna be spending a ridiculous amount on battle royales, and then he's I mean, probably gonna buy way more on top of that, right? I'll probably do. So I'm doing battle royales instead of singles, most likely. Um, but I'll I'll probably end up with like when everything is said and done. I'll probably end up with like at least three cases of this stuff, Man, and that oh is gosh. really rough because the MSRP on these I think is seventeen dollars a booster. Ooh, and they're gonna be twenty dollar battle royales. They're they're twenty dollar battle bit more yeah. expensive too. It's gonna be it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be rough. Your wallet's gonna be looking at you. I can't believe you've done this. <laughs> they're, uh... But it's gonna be awesome. I'm honestly I'm for sure probably getting a case, and then I think I'm just gonna like. Whatever happens at Worlds plus pre-release, and just do that, because I'm I'm an X-Men yeah. fan, sure, like base level. But even even like I don't I really haven't watched that much animated series stuff. I'm not the biggest X-Men fan. I'm really like I'm like a Wolver. I'm like a couple of characters X-Men fan, but the mechanics and the amazing look. Like, this is one of the only. This is one of the few Heroclix sets where I'm just blown away by the work they're putting into this set, and I really want. I really want to buy a lot. That's that's like honestly, that's like the god's honest truth. I just want to buy a ton of this set because of how number one, how good I think all the figures are. And number two, I can see myself playing them a ton. Like I can see myself making a Brotherhood theme team and an X Men theme team and all sorts of stuff. Like when XXS came out, I'm like, ah, I don't really want to buy any of this set. And I didn't buy any of this set. It wasn't until after I found out, like, oh, you can maybe get a whatever ID card and you could sell it for whatever. I bought a brick and I'm like, oh yeah, I got a second angel. Okay, whatever. You know, like. I haven't been this excited for a set just because of its mechanics in a really long time, and I'm really, really excited for that. Yeah, I we went from getting a colossal and like super boosters every, you know, like five sets maybe, to uh, like, you know, you'd maybe get one for a summer OP event would be like the grand prize kind of thing, and then they just like spoiled us in the last couple years where. Between con exclusives and Avengers Infinity and the Thor set and now this set, like I love two by twos. I don't know why. The one thing that I do not like about this format for two by twos is the old colossals just tower over these guys so bad. Yeah. Like if you take the old uh, giant size, it was a giant size X Men that came with the super boosters. Yeah, giant size X Men. So if you take one of like the like let's say Dormammu I think was one of them from that, um, maybe. Not. I mean it I totally think. wasn't. Uh, it was okay. Definitely no, it was Guardians like that had Dormammu. Right, let's let's, let's take just the say onslaught. Nemesis or a Apoc- Yeah, there's yeah. Onslaught. <laughs> like one of the X Men characters, uh, like Onslaught from that old set. I guarantee if you put him up next to the new one, he's gonna be a good like two inches taller. That might not be sure. right. Cause I think he's a little bit smaller. But he actually might you, be one of the smaller ones. Goodness gracious, Simeon! Yeah, if, like, you, a if you put him next to uh, Galactus, Galactus is like twice That's the an size. Easy one. Oh my god! So you know the sad part is, Zombie Galactus is twice the size than some of yeah. these. That's the real bummer. Zombie Galactus so, is so good though. It's insane. Yeah, he's so broken. He's so incredibly <laughs> good. Oh man, Zombie Galactus. Why don't? Why didn't he see play at two hundred points? Oh, let me get first class top top. Anyways. I'm only slightly miffed I couldn't play my Zombie Galactus that much. But yeah, that's this set. That's what we think of this set. I'm, I'm, just, I'm actually like craning my neck right now, trying to look at all my Colossals I have on my shelf, and I realize that the Atom is really, really short. And he was one of my all-time favorite Colossals. Uh, he was one of the smaller ones out of that he's set. awesome, but man, he was tiny for a dude. He was really small. He was a really, really small one. So yeah. But that's the X-Men. Those are the previews for the week. What else is in news? Thank you so much for asking. Um, as I was about to skip the rest of news and go to the Community Tuesday section, we're actually going to talk about a few things. Number one, they went ahead and they translated the Heroclix powers and abilities and the Heroclix rulebook into Espanol. That is right. If you are a Spanish speaker and you're not so great with English, like apparently, so 
I'm, I'm trying not to sound bad <laughs> when I say that. Um, but anyway, the pack and everything is now in Spanish. I think this is awesome. I want it to be in as many languages as possible. I want more people playing this game. So yes, absolutely, please. I'm very happy. I, I assume Mexico slash, I don't know if there's a big following in Spain, but I know there's actually quite a bit of players in Mexico slash the Brazil area that play HeroClix. So I'm really excited that there's now one that is uh, not just for English, like the English language, Spanish, yeah. language, which is awesome. I actually so. feel a little bit ignorant about this because I totally just assumed that it was already... Like, there was already a Spanish version available. I can't believe that these guys have been, like, putting on, like, na like Mexico Nationals and, like, you know, they've been doing Nationals down there and uh, in Europe and stuff with the English rules only. Like, I can't imagine trying to work around the phrasing in this game as not your, like, primary language. It's hard enough as being, like, a... English speaker. I can't believe that people were doing this when that wasn't their like, you know, their main language. That's crazy. For sure. And then another piece of WizKids news we have is we got a picture of the boxing ring. We already had a picture before um, boxing ring, wrestling, the WWE uh, wrestling arena ring sort of thing. And now we have a better picture of it with the graphic and the lines for how the characters going to be walking and everything. It is the ropes are still white, which I think is kind of kind of weird, uh, but whatever. It's, it, I guarantee they're going to make a red and a blue version eventually. I want to say, I want to say with every next set, it's probably going to be there's going to be a red version and a blue version for SmackDown and Raw. But we got a picture of it. There are three ropes. It looks like there's turnbuckles. Is that right, Simeon? I, as far as I can tell, they aren't the like little yellow pegs or not yellow, the little black pegs that the first one had, the boxing ring. So it does look like they've updated that part, and there's little turnbuckles. I, I mean, I hope that that's what it is. I can't tell exactly from the picture. Yeah, it's kind of hard because it's also moving constantly <laughs> in yeah, the little video. They yeah. also have figures on the turnbuckles. Now, I don't know if this is going to be an actual play feature or if they're just bouncing them there so they can look cool. Yeah, they got be a look Macho cool Man thing. doing an elbow drop. I know, it looks awesome. And then Roman Reigns <laughs> doing a Superman punch uh, coming down from that, which... It's very aesthetically pleasing, don't get me wrong. And then the graphic in the middle, instead of being blank, is the WWE logo, basically the set logo, but it's all white and black, and there's none of that little red part. And then it's a circle around it, so the W's are in white, which is really cool. And, uh, I think and yeah, it's and a super smart lines that go through it, so you can still see where all the squares are supposed to be, which is really important, obviously, for, you know, playing hero clicks, knowing where characters are. We're not one of those lame games that uses, like, a ruler or a tape measure. <laughs> Losers. Yeah. Oh, uh, you're a half centimeter off, Calder. You can't actually attack from that square. Too oh, bad. sorry about that, um, you know. Rep replica Jim, who has his perfectly painted army miniatures. Uh, I'm sorry, I moved my tank a uh, half inch, a little centimeter uh, forward. My bad. That'll totally change the... No, wait, actually, no, it doesn't. I totally can overshoot. Never mind. Those games are weird. I, I guarantee I alienated maybe two people that listen to this. <laughs> maybe I've always wanted people. to get into them, but Heroclix takes up so much time and money already. I can't imagine painting an entire army and learning an entire like, new set of rules for that army. Believe it or and not, all the mechanics, rules, yeah. uh, rules for games like that are a lot more intuitive than Hero Clicks is. They're a lot easier to pick up. I used to play Flames of War. Um, There's a guy, in it, like, an hour away from me, who I would I would go there, and he owned a game shop, like, sort of, not really. And then uh, he would go to conventions, like, gaming conventions, like, local ones, and we would just play Flames of War. It's really fun. It's really cool, but it's, like, totally a different crowd that plays, like, those army, like, style games. They take it a lot more seriously because it's, like, we're reenacting the battle of, like, whatever. I'm like, yeah, but if Russia wins, Russia wins. Like, that's not accurate <laughs> to the reenactment anyway, so who cares what happens? And they were really unimpressed with how I would move my tanks and infantry around just to, to, to like, to be an idiot, really. It's like, that's not really historically correct on the movement. Did you patterns. park like, your tank in a puddle, Calder? What are you I would doing? I would like I would like make a row of tanks sideways to block the infantry. Get that tank out of my trench. Which is like terrible. Uh, so yeah, it was it was fun. It was a fun game to play. But anyways, uh, back to Hero Clicks. That's Hero Clicks news.
That's, I believe that is it. And then they, they had a bunch of other posting things with Worlds, yeah. but I, I think believe it's, it's mostly what we know. I think it's super smart that they put the WWE logo like so prominent on there. Huge, because yeah. if you've if you've never been in a game shop and somebody's like walking past and like something catches their eye in like the hero clicks table and they'll be like, Is that Captain Picard? Or, you know, like, is that Professor Xavier? Is that Superman? You know, like or if you've got like a colossal and they'll be like, Why is Carnage the size of a house? And they're like, oh, well, this is Heroclix, and rules don't matter, and Carnage is giant. I mean, I mean, no, it's actually from a comic storyline, but you get what I mean. I think uh, the box or the wrestling ring will have a similar effect where people will be like, there's a wrestling, like, tabletop game? And be like, yeah, there is now. There actually was one before. I don't know if you've ever seen it. I saw it on shelves once. And yeah. It was kind of sad, yeah. unpainted, gray, big show, and, like, Braun Strowman and, and whatever. But now we have Heroclix. That's all that matters, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that's all that matters. Pre so now that's figures. like, yeah, pre-painted figures. You don't want to do the work yourself. Get out of here. Who, who are you lying to that you're actually going to paint these X-Men figures? You don't Get have out of town. time for that. You don't have time for that. Your wallet doesn't have time to even spend all this money, but you still do it anyways. That's actually totally 100%, I'm pretty sure, this time. All of the news we have this week, so we can go ahead and take it into Dial H for Heroclix Community Tuesday's Question of the Week. Dozens of us! Dozens! Yeah, bro, like dozens. So, with most community Jesus questions, uh, half you guys got it wrong. I don't care who I offend. That's a fact. Um, it's actually more than half. So here, here's the question. I'm going to say the question and what it actually means, and then I'm going to tell you how you, maybe not you specifically, Carl or whoever, but <laughs> how you or the majority of, quote-unquote, you, understood the question. This is what the question said. With TMNT Unplugged and other video game related characters coming out for Hero Clicks, what other WizKids properties should should have their video game versions made? Here's how you guys read it. With TMNT Unplugged and other video game related characters coming out for Hero Clicks, what other video games do you want to see be made into Hero Clicks? That's not what it says. It's pre existing WizKids properties and the video games they could come from, which I thought was already an open ended question. But nope, someone had to say Resident Evil or some other dumb stuff, which maybe wanted to blow my brains out. So, anyways, Jesus. Simeon, do you want to first? You had to was... get first. You had to get political. The entire uh, X Men preview, talking about Senator Kelly and his politics right. and stuff. Sorry. And now you're putting all of our poor community people on blast. I can't believe you. I can't I... believe you've done this. <laughs> I, I can't believe you've done this. After Chris left, you've really changed, Calder. I can't believe you're calling us out like that. Well, yeah, I am. You got it wrong. You got it so wrong. Read the question, please. <laughs> to be I'm fair, be, I too would have gotten the question wrong had I read it. You would have. It was it was a long-winded question, so I'm gonna give him a half pass, uh, which is, I mean, in high school that means uh, that's an F. You all failed. Um, hey, oh. I'm gonna start us off with David G. Gaffney. Wait, did I say G? That's a J. David J. Gaffney. He said, I'd have to go with Legend of Zelda. So many opportunities with objects. Um, depends on... I mean, it doesn't depend at all on which Legend of because Zelda you go Because that's the wrong way to answer the question. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm done now. I, maybe I'm not. So, I was going to say it depends on which Legend of Zelda you pick. But as far as so many opportunities with objects, every Legend of Zelda had like bombs and boomerangs and grapple hooks and bow and arrows and swords and shields and everything. Um, it does depend on which Legend of Zelda you're talking about as far as which characters to go with, because some of them are, I, I the plot, like, just, just bad. The only I mean, Legend of Zelda that matters, and the one we should get in Heroes form, is clearly Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks. Obviously. I don't even you know, know what Do you know that what that is. one is? It's is a that... train game. Link travels around Hyrule oh, no. on a train, on rails, and other evil train. This is a game that actually existed. Ladies, I played through all of it. It was awesome. You, you, you literally Sounds as good as Mario around. RPG. It was insane. I mean, there were levels where you would get off your train and then do other stuff, but a lot of the boss fights and stuff were on train tracks. It, it was so dumb. I, I played Ocarina of Time, and then my friend was like, you should play this one. And then I played Spirit Tracks, and I've regretted it <laughs> since. Uh. Anyway, anyways, um, now I want uh, Link driving a train as a, as a yeah, awesome vehicle. Yeah, just as like a side note, I think as long as uh, are Amiibo is still a thing. They are still a thing. and they're, As, they're as long as that's still a thing, uh, 
Legend of Zelda probably never going to be a possibility for WizKids. Vigilante That's... collectible. On... Oh, sorry about that. I was oh, go ahead. Go ahead. All right, cool. I didn't care anyways. Vigilante Collectible said the X-Men arcade game, we get multicolored Sentinel Troopers, Hellfire Knights, and Master Mold slash Nimrod merged robot. This was, uh, by the way, the correct version uh, to answer the question for anybody uh, at home listening. You know what? You're just a Twitter elitist, and Twitter. I'm sick of it. Tyler Murren <laughs> says, man, I feel like we need Injustice versions of the DC characters like Dick Grayson Deadman and Yellow Lantern... How? I think there was more to that. Was was <laughs> there, or is that it? Uh, no, sorry. You tell said, me. Yellow Lantern How. Then on the flip side, you could do the Marvel vs. Capcom set, but truth be told, a video game set drops. I'd really need sets from the shows The Boys and The Umbrella Academy first. So uh, if you haven't seen The Umbrella Academy, it's actually, I think it's on Netflix. It's, it's cool. super good. Um, yeah. Uh, originally a comic by Gerard Way, the lead singer of uh, Green Day, I believe. Um, yes, that's the correct <laughs> band. He's my singer. Chemical Green Day. Is that what the My Green Chemical Day? Yep. Um, I thought it was American Rejects. No. Ah, oh, whatever. Absolutely not. Uh, the Boys is a Garth Ennis comic that is incredibly R-rated. Um, it's an Amazon Prime show. It is an Amazon Prime show now. I haven't seen it because I don't do Amazon Prime. But I'll probably try and pirate it at some point. I literally, well, let's okay. Oh, let's say that on. <laughs> Going back to uh, his actual, his actual response though. Um, did you ever play Injustice, or did you ever read no, the comic I, that was? No, I'm going to be honest with you. I 100% hate the controls of Injustice. They feel wonky and they feel terrible. And I don't care who gets mad at me. They are not fluid controls. They feel like playing uh, wood, like just like the board. It feels like the controls are made out of wood. Like, like it just feels blocky. The controls yeah. are terrible in that game. Yeah, I've watched people with play me. online how like, terrible I am. really it's, well. It's hard. Well, I'm just bad at fighting games in general. Like, I'm good at Mortal Kombat because you can spam attacks and you can learn combos and just, like, repeat those. Um, but that's, like, earlier Mortal Kombat, so I haven't played the newest ones. Um, so I have played Injustice just for the storyline. It's a super cool story. Um, it's kind of like a what if Superman goes bad storyline, which we've gotten in other certain We've never situations. gotten any of those storylines ever before. That's but Injustice original. does a, a really cool version. Uh, it's like Red Sun meets uh, uh, what if uh, what if Red Sun Superman wasn't bad and wasn't uh, he was American and he was bad. Well, you see, he's not actually American because uh, he wasn't born in America, but okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, actually, he's probably Antonian. got a citizenship. See, I don't uh, know if he does. I don't think the Kents did that, to be honest with you. The way that Dick Grayson becomes Dead Man is so bad in that comic, though. It's like the way he dies, I should say, is so bad in that comic. Okay. It was really sad. But yeah, Marvel vs. Capcom would also be super cool. I'm taking so long on this one answer. I'm sorry. Yes, you are. Jedi Citizen Jedi Legend, who, by the way, got the question wrong, uh, <laughs> said Metal Gear Solid, some good characters and options for a colossal or two, perhaps some equipment, like Sniper Wolf's rifle or a cardboard box that gives mobile stealth. Now, I do like this answer, although it's wrong, but I still really like the answer. I would, I would actually really dig a Metal Gear uh, Solid uh, set. It would, be, it would be really cool. Yeah, a D dog with like stealth and like some exploit blades or something. Did you yeah. ever play uh, the Phantom Pain? I've I've played none of Metal Gear Solid. I just oh, know memes no. about it. That's honestly it. No, that's a lie. Little Big Planet had DLC for Metal Gear Solid Five, and I played through the Little Big Planet <laughs> Metal Gear Solid <laughs> level. Oh, so you know the storyline? I totally you, know the deep rich you know storyline of the Metal Gear Solid franchise. Uh, it'd be another excuse for me to load up, like, a soundbite on my phone, so then when I'm playing, I can do the ring, where, like, the little exclamation point oh, pops up. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I know that head. stuff. And yeah. Colonel. All right. <laughs> Hit us the Facebook one. All Save right. Uh, David Herberger says, I really liked the Halo set, even though I don't play Halo, which is fair. I mean, the Halo set brought in the grenade mechanics, so that was cool. Um, he says... That was a pretty big video game set, 
The biggest licensing I would like to see is Alien and Predator. If they want to make a movie version or game version, I don't really care. Just make some version. So we do have uh, Alien and Predator as horror clicks, but they are not compatible with hero clicks unless you go through a lot of work to like copy over powers and redo stats and stuff like that. Right on, man. Now, this is technically a valid way, because that was at one point a WizKids property, so I'll take it. That's a good way to answer the question. Bonsai Tree and Sapling, who I'm still 90% sure is Vigilante T.A. I I still could be wrong. I haven't gotten corrected yet, though. He said Magic the Gathering, as well as Dungeons and Dragons. WizKids is already making their miniatures. Might as well slap dials on them as well. He went ahead and posted a GIF that made me not have to research this. There is a Magic the Gathering uh, video game. I did know that for sure. I didn't know if there's a Dungeons and Dragons one. I guess maybe there is. And they do have the rights to Dungeons and Dragons because they're making D&D miniatures. So yeah, man, let's do it. I don't know if D&D would go for that, though, because Not like those miniatures that. help sell their books, which That's D&D true. as a whole isn't like an expensive game to get into. Like most of the stuff you can find online and your dungeon master, if you like find a group, your dungeon master will already have most of the books that he needs. So well, it's expensive for one person in the group. Legitimately, you can all play D&D for free. One yeah. person already owns a million pairs of dice. One person, you print off a sheet. Okay, sorry, go to your local library and pay 10 cents for a copy or like whatever. Or, you know, whatever, go print something at home. Like, D&D is a free game to get into. What happens after that is your fault. So all the money that you spent on that game, it's not on us, chief. <laughs> Just saying. So I don't know if my my point was I don't know if uh, D and D would actually care if Wiz Kids tried to appropriate their stuff to like their own miniature game since it's different enough and I I don't know I just don't know. Citizen Jeff Bowyer says now that City of Heroes is back on the scene I love the new dials for the old City of Heroes figures and new ones added in addition to Statesman. Positron, Manticore, and the villains that were made before, they could add other prominent in-game characters, like Back Alley Brawler and Sister Psyche. Psyche, I'm not sure. I've never played City of Heroes. Um, it was like an open-world MMORPG, right? It was, it was I like, guess I'm uh, wrong guy. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I think I might have played that, like, once. I want to say it was... Uh, it wasn't, like, an RPG in the sense of World of Warcraft, but I feel like it was, like, a you-explore-the-city-online kind of thing. Maybe I'm completely off-base, though. DC had a game like that, right? I think DC's had a few weird games like that, or at least yeah. similar enough. Um, yeah, I <laughs> I just I don't play enough PC games. Oh, that is sadly. fair. Citizen, Mr. Clicksflix said, Mortal Kombat, by the way, he answered this question wrong, just so everybody is keeping track at home. <laughs> so, he said, Mortal Kombat seems like an easy candidate. Pokemon, also a wrong answer, could have some cool mechanics, and Super Smash Bros., yeah, that's right, a wrong answer as well, would have a cool selection of characters. Don't get me wrong, not bad answers, they're just wrong. I really hope Mr. Clicksflix talks shit about you uh, on his next YouTube video. He should. I, I really... Hope so. Do it. Since Do you it. were his uh, teammate. All right, Peter awesome. Marshfield says, Oof, so many possibilities. I'll try and pick one that's outside the box. I'd like to see some of the demons slash personas from the SMT, Shin Megami Tensei games. Most of those are just adaptations of historical figures like Odin and the various arcana of the tarot deck. Um, I've... I've read a lot about these games and like listen to podcasts about these games i have yet to pick up a persona game or any of the like ones from any of like the titles i'm just not a big like that style of rpg i'm not like a huge jrpg uh game player i didn't understand half the words you said in that <laughs> sound. i'm not gonna lie i'm like All yeah, right. I'm <laughs> okay Super fan Christian Bogan. I'm not sure if WizKid still has the rights or not. Hey, look at that. He actually prefaces it with the uh, the way to answer the question. Uh, but we need a new Halo set. We can get two by two figures from that set. Things like warthogs, banshees, hunters, scarabs, or covenant dropships. Bring back grenades or a new gun mechanic that changes with different weapons. Yeah, I like the grenade mechanic. Um, superhero 
Michael Miller, the Devil Hunter, says, Marvel vs. Capcom is my dream, but I'll settle for Ultimate Alliance. Ultimate Alliance would be cool because they had those uh, combo specials where, like, Iron Man would shoot down at Cap Shield and, like, it would ricochet around and, like, hit everyone in, like, a certain area. Or Spider-Man would, like, web shoot Wolverine's feet and just, like, spin him in a circle or something. I don't know. They did all kinds of crazy stuff. Ultimate Alliance was awesome. Super fan, Little Plastic Superheroes, The Ruffian said, kept it short and sweet here, Injustice. Tristan Campos said, Marvel vs. Capcom and DC vs. Mortal Kombat. Sounds realistic. My fantasy pick is Earthworm Jim or Clay Fighters. Uh, never played Clay Fighters. Earthworm Jim was pretty cool. Uh, I don't know how it would translate to hero clicks other than just having like a a little guy who can whip you and shoot you. That's all that Earthworm Jim did in my memory. Right on. Good old Earth. I know, like I know what he looks like. That's it. That's all I know about Earthworm Jim. Dude in the yeah. Ben Jones. I want to say is a heroic title. I probably got it wrong. Yeah, it's protagonist Ben Jones. I'm so good at this. Buffy the Vampire Slayer, maybe a two-player thing, like the Orville is going to be. Or a CTD set, set, plenty to work with. I didn't know Buffy the Vampire Slayer was a video game, so that's I'm, cool. I'm sure that at some point it became one. Probably. I mean, I, they, I heard it, it was it really had popular. several comics, and yeah, it was on for quite a while. Um, I'm surprised Supernatural hasn't gotten, like, a a weird, bad computer game yet. Matthew R. Moore says... Final Fantasy, so many possibilities. Monsters, big summon monsters, robots, and tons of races and jobs. I don't know. Right on. What what would it be a job in Hero Clicks? No. Nah, I, I feel like I might have I don't know. I might have wrote that <laughs> down wrong. I don't <laughs> you probably I feel like probably I didn't did. copy that correctly. Uh Ray W said Resident Evil, of course. Zombies. Some, some Raccoon City love going on here. Oh, yeah. Some T-Virus stuff. Yeah. Malcolm Rush says, Pokemans. So many characters. He actually said Pokemon. I just I grew up with I Digimon, the better of the two series. Clearly. Clearly the superior in that uh, in that aspect. <laughs> Digital world. Oh, jeez. Len said Final Fantasy. All right. Steven Bumbera said Metroid. Metroid would actually be... A super solid, uh, like, shifting focus thing, or, I mean, I guess just shifting focus. You'd have, like, the range one, like, curl up in a ball, have one with rockets, have one that flies. You'd have, like, the Dark Samus. The Metroid, like, mythos is actually super deep. Did you know that, Calder? Do you want me to go I into not, it? I don't know anything about Metroid. I, I just know There's the at least four games. Hunter. I know that. And one of them was for the GameCube. I know that so... as well. Correct. So there's a big old pterodactyl. You gotta yep. kill him. Yeah, that's that's one of the things. Yep. That's all I know. Loyal Miller, Citizen Loyal Miller. I think the Spider-Man video games are awesome and would make nice clicks. And also Marvel Ultimate Alliance. All right. Justin Quinn Honeycutt says some Injustice sculpts would be dope if a little unnecessary. Uh, I mean. If we got, if it was like a quality and you could tell it was Injustice, I don't think it'd be unnecessary. Yes, it would be the 500th Superman figure that they've made, but, I mean. Are there any real, like, big costume differences in the Injustice universe? Like, if I look at this Injustice Batman, how different is it going to be from. Yeah, so it's, it's going to be small details, and WizKids okay. isn't great on the small details. I There's a few figures that, like, Shazam looks quite a bit different. Um, there's, like, a Yellow Lantern Hal um, that was said already. And, of course, he's a Yellow Lantern, but I think we've got a Yellow Lantern Hal somewhere. Um, Probably. I mean, with War of Light. Or the, yeah, for the else. most part, they're all going to look like their normal counterparts. But if they did get, like, the detail in there... The Superman looks really cool. The Batman looks really cool. Again, it's like video game graphics compared to miniatures painted. For sure. Like, en masse. 
I'm gonna Matt Zerfrey said Overwatch, Final Fantasy, Fallout, and Mega Man. I agree with like half of those, but none of them always gets properties. Try again. <laughs> All right, Brian Pauling says Final Fantasy Tactics. Please specifically think. Tactics. Yeah, I, I like that. I've never played a Final Fantasy game. I played Chrono Trigger, which I think is similar to the earlier Final Fantasy games, but no idea what the difference between normal Final Fantasy and Fantasy Tactics is. Well, that makes two of us. My last one on the Twitter was Alan John Wilkinson, and he said, The Injustice franchise blah, 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 could use some clicksing, I believe. That was my tongue getting twisted, not him slapping the keyboard. But yeah, we had a lot of Injustice love. How much more is on the Facebooks? We've just got two more, so I'll finish them up real quick. Dean Hubbard said, Mortal Kombat, of course, which couldn't agree more. Um, if they redid Street Fighter and, you know, actually gave them some good stats and powers, that'd be nice, too. And then Rebecca Timt Romo said, Capcom, with three exclamation points, because Capcom. Only three? Are you even a Capcom fan if you didn't put four <laughs> exclamation points? What a fake, fake fan. That's All right, not so even what would your... beautiful Joe levels. <laughs> beautiful Joe's awesome. Um, what would your pick be, Simeon? Pre-existing WizKids property, video game version of it, though. Oh, pre-existing WizKids property. Man. I, I guess, like, if we got the... Like the Arkham series as like a set with like, I liked the way Azrael looked in it. Weren't those uh, video games already? Like, weren't those sets already? The Arkham series? Yeah. The, like I mean, there wasn't, was there set? was, it was like a mini set. Oh, okay. Uh, but they've, I think there's been at least two games since then. Oh, And gotcha. I, I wouldn't mind getting like the Batmobile from that set and, uh, some of the characters just looked way cooler in that set, like in that game than, and like normal comics. Right on. Mr. Right. Freeze was actually like a threat was in that really game in compared cool. to compared to normal Mr. Freeze and Hero Clicks. Rest in peace, my man, Mr. Freeze. One of my favorite all time Batman villains. He gets no love. No love at all. My answer, this is what made me actually really think of the question, was I always thought how cool it would be if they gave Marvel or DC the retro 16-bit version of sculpts. And I would really wanted the, um, this is just my idea, kind of fan crafting here, but the chase set for the new Captain America set, I think it would be really cool if it was Captain America and the Avengers, the, you know, the, the, the video game, the arcade cabinet slash SNES game that came out. And you could just make it four chase figures, Hawkeye, Iron Man, Captain America, and Vision, but make them in the 16-bit sculpt style. I think that would be really really cool for a chase set and i think people wouldn't get mad at it because it's not an entire set of that really weird style instead it's literally just the chases some people will be able to pass on them a fan like me actually owned an snes and it was one of the first games i bought for it because i just like yeah captain america game heck yeah i'm gonna buy it and it's fun i love playing it i think it's awesome uh so yeah i think that would be a really really cool way to do video games in uh in a hero click set for sure yeah you know, I, I, I'm actually changing my answer because you said Ooh. that. I'm changing it to Superman 64. Oh, but, no. Oh, wait. So they much already worse. make most Superman clicks weak enough to mirror <sighs> Superman 64. Ooh. Why is Superman not a super? Should be? Am I yelling? I want the, the 64 I... sculpt to be like, he has to fly through. Like I want the rings to be on the sculpt. <laughs> that would be awesome. Like, there's a ring behind him and a ring in front of him. But, like, and they're, if, like, drifting off, and he's so clearly not going to make it to the front ring in time or whatever. Like, he's going to hit the side. It's got that That'll green color to it. Um, yeah. If, oh, he, yeah. if he doesn't, like, he's got to, like, fly around the map and hit rings so often, or he gets earthbound neutralized. There needs to be, like, a DC map where there's also a map bonus. Like, Superman 64 map bonus. You fly around all the rings, you get, like, something crazy <laughs> happen. But it just make it almost impossible to actually fly through the rings. Oh, it was. It was almost oh, impossible. Oh, yeah, absolutely. To do it within the time limit. And then also, <laughs> Superman would constantly run out of freeze breath and laser vision. Like, you know. You know, like he does. He could yeah. only do that so long. That's, really. that's the kind of game I wanted to play as a kid, was Superman can't use his powers... And the controls are hard. Good luck, kid. 
And Life also, you know those changed. levels you hate in every other game where it's fly through rings and stuff? Yeah, that's this entire game. Yeah. 90% of it. Like, have fun. All right, so we can go ahead and move on to Jedi Legends Hero Clicks Tip of the Week. Do you want to sell me death sticks? I don't want to sell you death sticks. Do you want to go home and rethink your life? I want to go home and rethink my life. Man, the prequels sure are the best movies, aren't they? Anyways, he says, Battle Fury got better in 2017, remember? Your target rolls for shape change. Uh-huh, Battle Fury doesn't care about shape change. You can go ahead and attack him. It's an awesome gif of Wolverine, uh, you know, stabbing Sabretooth, because, you know, they're totally brothers in canon and whatnot. Anyways, yeah, man, I love, I actually kind of like Battle Fury. It's actually one of my favorite powers, just because I hate shape change, because there's... It's different with Super Senses. It's like, you're not even going to let me attack you. Man, at least let me roll some dice, man. Let me roll mm. some dice. People forget about, like, it also has a few defensive abilities where uh, you can't be in-capped or mind-controlled when you have it. And so, for a while there, when, uh, like, Starro was really big in the meta scene and Goblin King was, like, still yeah, prominent, it was still being played, um... Goblin King just, like, had to pick Battle Fury every turn, and then Starro was 100 points of nothing. That's right. Well, <laughs> fantastic. That's our podcast this week. Everybody, give yourself a round of applause. You've made it this far. Simeon, is there anything you want to leave our listeners off with before we go? You know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a little bit of a challenge. If you're a person that has a normal venue that they go to, and you're not playing for like a particular prize that you really want this week. Build a team that you uh, that's gonna lose. Like go out and don't don't make make a terrible team on purpose, but build a team with just like some figures you'd never normally grab, and go out with the expectation of losing, and see if you have more fun than normal. Right on. That's what I do like all the time, and it's actually way more fun for me. Uh, to just, like, get completely, like, smashed around and, like, you know, like, three turns in, like, the game's already done. And I'm just like, <laughs> like, well, that's not fun when that happens. But, no. I mean, so, yeah. You just, still want to actually play, but, you know, just don't get yeah. so crazy gung-ho about Try it out for a win week. every single week. Build Try. a team that the goal is your opponent will win, but you won't automatically lose. And see what you can so, do. So, I once made a team that was literally you would automatically lose. Uh, it was a team of all mercenaries. And oh, yeah. Once you only have mercenaries on your team, they all go. So, I played all mercenaries in one thug. And basically, it was if they could kill the thug. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> it's, it's, a really, it's a really fun team because it's like, it's like chess. Like, sure, I've got all these other guys. But once you kill the king, I'm just done, done, man. So, the thug was the king in the back. It was a really, it was, seriously, it was a fun team. Try it out, guys. Try it yeah. out. I like grabbing uh, I uh, like Alpha Flight and stuff, and just losing with Alpha Flight. Oh, it's just because Canadians are terrible. I'm just joking. <laughs> I love Canada. I love Canadian people, but Alpha Flight's really bad. Even Canadians have to admit, like they give Alpha Flight some pretty terrible figures in this game. And that was Dial H for Hero Clicks, ladies and gentlemen. I want to remind everybody before I go ahead and say all the links and stuff. We are doing a Patreon giveaway for August, so if you are at any level in the Patreon, $1, $10, whatever, you're entered to win. The first place prize is an Avengers 1 million BC Ghost Rider. The second place prize is a Reverse Flash and a Steve Trevor, because I know no one has any of those at all, totally, uh, left over. I just have a million. And the third place prize is an Influence Ring. And then everybody who is, I believe I said, superhero or above will be getting a sticker this month, and they have a choice between a Howdy Howdy Let's Get Rowdy sticker, and a classic Dial H logo sticker. So go ahead and check that out on the Patreon. Dial H for Hero Clicks. You can find us at Podbean slash Dial H for Hero Clicks. Twitter at Dial H, that's the number four, Hero Clicks. Facebook page is Dial H for Hero Clicks. iTunes and YouTube. Our email is Dial H for Hero Clicks at gmail.com. We also have Patreon and Redbubble. Simeon, do you want to read us out of here? Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all of the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Maybe pre order some of that new X Men set. Oh, yeah. Happy trails.